Shortly after the 4th of July, you may start to notice that the days are getting a little bit shorter. And one of the things that happens when the days get a little shorter is soybean plants in the northern part of the country sense that and they begin to flower and start the reproductive stages. Well, it's nice to have predictable things like that when you know around a certain date you're going to start seeing the reproductive stages in the northern part of the country in soybean fields. And you can do some planning for your farm in terms of what you're going to spray in that field, what you need to watch out for, and also you can start paying attention to, okay, flowers are going to lead to pods eventually, so the more of these flowers I can save, the more pods I can get. And here is a real key factor for yield in soybean fields. We lose and abort all kinds of flowers out there. What can we do to fix that problem? Well, the first thing when we start talking about what we can do to get higher yielding soybeans is you've got to have good fertility out there. So once those soybeans start to flower, they do take a lot of nutrients out of the field, a tremendous amount of phosphorus and potassium. And, you know, very often in the Midwest, corn and soybean farmers will fertilize the corn and then hope that there's enough fertility left for the soybeans. That's one of the main reasons why soybeans abort their flowers is they just don't have enough overall fertility to support as many pods as we might think that they could. Well, one thing that we've seen play out this year was late planting on soybeans across the whole country. And there were millions and millions of acres that went in late this year of soybeans. And with the tremendous price of beans, you're probably gonna turn out okay. But here is where you start to see some differences from one year to the next. Once soybeans start their reproductive stages, you want to have as big a plant as you can so the plant can catch all the sunlight energy, has huge root systems that can pull in all those nutrients that Brian was talking about so you can produce the most flowers, keep the most flowers, and end up with the most pods and soybeans on your plants. So when you plant it later and you've got really small beans and all of a sudden we've started to flower out there, this is where things are going to start hurting that yield because you just can't catch all the sunlight. So normally in a late planting situation, you would prefer to plant a little bit narrower row. I don't know if population makes a huge difference, but I can't see where it would hurt you to be a little bit heavier population out there just to try and catch more sunlight if your plants aren't that bushy. Well, unfortunately one of the things that soybeans are seeming to catch every year anymore is insects and when you have bugs feeding on your soybean plants you know real early in the season it's not a big deal for the overall feeding problem they cause it's just they can open the plant up for disease so that's bad but especially when you get later in the season at this time of the year and later if you have bugs out there they can do some serious damage to your soybean plants. They actually can chew off areas of the plant so it can cause the plant to abort flowers. It can have disease enter in so those flowers will abort that way. Just a number of problems you can have and certainly once you start to see pods on the plant, there are insects like bean leaf beetles that can clip the pods off. So you've gotta have good insect control especially once your soybeans start to flower. Now with all these things, we're not trying to scare you and you say, oh man, I've got a bad situation going on in my field right now. I'm gonna lose this, these flowers and I'm, I'm not gonna have much yield. That's not necessarily the case. The good thing about soybeans is they are pretty adaptable to the environment and soybeans will continue to produce flowers for quite some time. So even if you had some flowers out there now and you see that you're aborting some of them, chances are you're going to have another flush of flowers and another flush of flowers because that plant is still going to continue to grow. In the northern part of the country, just because you've hit reproductive stages on soybeans doesn't mean the vegetative growth is going to stop. You're going to actually see both things happening. So plants are still going to get taller, they're still going to bush out a little bit more, and you're going to keep having flowers as this plant continues to grow. Well, let's contrast that with what happens in the southern part of the country. See, in the northern part of the country, we have what's called indeterminate soybeans, and they will start to flower based on the shortening of the days. So once we get past June 21st, the longest day of the year, at some point after that, reproduction is triggered. Again, that's indeterminate soybeans. In the southern part of the United States, they have what's called determinate soybeans. So they will have all their growth stages, all their vegetative stages, and then they will have their reproductive stages. So it doesn't matter exactly when they put that crop in in the upper U.S. You're going to start to see flowers usually in early July. But in the southern U.S., they're going to have pretty much a certain amount of heat units, a certain amount of days roughly, and then the beans are going to start to flower. So it's definitely 
slightly different in those two parts of the country. So in the north there is some hope for, for all of you guys who got stuff planted late this year. Uh, I know we had some fields that went in a little later than we would have liked on our farm or, too. Or, or two months later, you know. <laughs> you, you just never know how those <laughs> things are going to go. There is still some hope because that plant is going to grow. If you get decent conditions and you get some rain later on in the season, you can still have some fantastic soybean you yields. You can, but one of our main messages is whether you have indeterminate soybeans or determinate soybeans, once they have started the reproductive stages and once they have started to flower, that is the critical time of year for soybeans. And if you're out spraying certain herbicides that can be a little harsh on the plant, things like maybe Pinnacle or for that matter, even Cobra, we get a little worried about if you're going to drop a whole bunch of leaves off the plant, slow down that plant, stunt that plant. We're real concerned about it. So try to get your herbicide sprayed before your beans start to flower. And one of those weeds that you'll want to get taken care of early is our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? 